Welcome to another session of Character Modeling with me, Steve Moore, aka S'more. You join me today in Molina, which is one of my favorite spots in California. And uh, we're changing things up a little bit. So this week we're going to get straight into it. Uh, we're going to be taking our model from Marvel Designer into ZBrush. And I have a few tips and tricks I've picked up uh, regarding that. So it should be fun. And, um, yeah, so we're going to get straight into that, but stick around till the end of the video. It's a little Easter egg, a little surprise for you guys. Um, I hope you like it. Um, so please stay tuned to the end. And with that, let's do it. Let's get into it. All right, so here we are in ZBrush. And if you watched the last episode, at the very end, I just touched on the need to try uh, to quadrate your mesh. So by default, um, Marvelous Designer spits out a bunch of triangles and if we turn on the draw polyframe tool here with the line on you'll see not only are they triangles they're a bunch of five side five sided patches right and this is absolutely the worst thing for sculpting on um, if you're if you're building a a mesh that you intend to subdivide as a rule you want things to be quads as much as possible now and, and just to just to show you what the problem is here, if we go and subdivide this mesh a couple of times, what you're seeing is all these horrible lumpy artifacts that we don't want, right? So let's just return to Marvel's Designer for a second and take a look at the export options. All right, so with uh, the, all the pieces that comprise your jacket selected, Set the, under the property editor, be sure to set the particle distance to uh, something around five. So what we're doing is we're decreasing the particle distance, which is increasing the number of particles needed for the simulation, right? So what we're doing is we're, we're adding resolution to our jacket. And I'm, I'm going with five because any higher and it's really going to bog things down. So I think five is probably a good number to shoot for. So yeah, as I've emphasized, we, we really don't want tries. So we are going to quadrate this mesh. Um, to do that, you will go up to the edit menu and drag down to find the context menu, then choose 3D garment and finally choose quadrate. Now, once you do this, the machine is going to start simming again and you're going to see a little synchronized bar come up. This will take a while. So it's a good time to get a cup of coffee. Um, and let it, just let it do its thing and once it's finished we are ready to export okay so to export this garment into zbrush uh, of course you'll have the garment itself export um, selected nothing else and you're going to go up to file drag down to export and choose obj selected all right so after you after you click save this dialog box is going to open up and we're going to choose uh, some options here that might seem counterintuitive but it'll all make sense in the end so uh, rather than single object for example we're going to go with multiple objects we're going to choose unweld and we're going to use thin rather than thick um, and just a heads up Save this version of your Marvelous Designer file off. If you're modeling your character following along here with me, save a version right now as a branch and we will come back and we're going to export in the future. We'll export another version, like a lower res version that we're going to let use as to leverage um, making our gamers model. But for now, multiple objects, unweld, thin, I'm using centimeters that's because that's the units the character is modeled in and click OK. All right, so to begin, we're going to import the uh, quadrated mesh and and therefore I've loaded up the model. It's a good idea um, to, you know, ZBrush historically has had some issues with scale and and having been burnt by that, you know, back in the day, 
I always make sure, just for peace of mind, that I import new new meshes, new parts into the model file itself. Even if I'm going to exp even if I'm going to work on it um, independently, I'll start by importing it into the scene. So to do this, we're going to go up to uh, Sub Tool Master, Multi Append, and we're going to find models. There we go. So here we go. This is my quadrated mesh. Click on Open. All right. So, got that. Let's just hide everything else. It's going to be at the bottom of the stack here. Click on that layer and turn everything off. Okay, so now let's take a look at this puppy. So, turning on the uh, polyframe again. And yes, we still have some patches, but you'll notice that generally now we have nice quads, nice polygons, and if I were to smooth that now, you'll see much less, it's not perfect, but there's much less artifacts, you particularly notice it around the edges here, it's, it's a lot smoother, this is going to be much better for sculpting on, so undo that, okay, and here's the deal, actually turning back on the polygroups for a second, so because we've exported this mesh as separate pieces we have it's literally broken into individual panels and we want that because um, later on we're going to extract these panels and give them some thickness right but before we do that you'll notice again if I smooth it you start to lose some volume the edges pull away and we want to retain that volume and the way we're going to do that is is basically um, polygroups, or not polygroups, we're going to go up to the edge loop menu and we're going to use edge loops. Okay, so we're going to use edge loops, but before we do that, um, let's isolate, let's extract these metal studs from the leather jacket because we don't, we want to just work on the leather jacket. So the way I'm going to do that is if you control shift click and then click on an individual panel, you isolate that and then you can control and drag a mask around that, right? So then all we have to do is repeat that process till we get everything but our studs. So I'll just go around this model. A little bit tedious, but we'll get there. Control, by the way, so once you control shift and click to isolate, mask, and then once you've done that again, just control shift and click in space to unhide the rest of the polygroups. So now we have all the leather masked. Um, we still have, they're, they're still individual polygroups. So to fix that, we'll go up to the polygroup menu here. I'm just gonna turn off wireframes, so it's easier to see. And we're going to use choose group masked here and that groups all the leather, leather, leather panels into one piece. They're still separate meshes, but they are, but they are at least one poly group. Um, and now if we, uh, by the way, when we grouped masked, you might have noticed if I turn off poly groups now that the, uh, now all the studs are masked automatically. Right, so now all we have to do is group mask one more time, and we have all the little studs and the eyes down here. They are now one polygroup. So we just got two polygroups. Fantastic. So all we need to do now is separate those suckers. So under the subtool menu, you go down to split, and you see group split here. So you hit group split, and you go, okay, it's undoable. I'm okay with that. And voila, we now have studs, jacket, studs, jacket, cool. And I'll just rename that so I don't lose track of what's what. Um, easy to do. And jacket, and we'll just, we now we can hide those studs and just focus on the, on the jacket. Oh, but we've lost our polygroups, not to worry. Uh, let me clear that mask back to polygroups and you have this really nice feature here called auto groups. So if we click on auto groups, voila, we get all our individual panels back again. 
and that's what we want right now. Cool. I'll turn. No, I'm going to leave that single-sided. Oops, I missed a piece. So uh, when I was combining the jack, I forgot about this one little piece here. By the way, if you if you click on a you know a panel and you mask a spot like like just like that, um, it pivots. It makes that the center point for the camera. So that's a that's a nice way to navigate in ZBrush if you're trying to spin around something. Um, but anywho. Uh, turning back on that jacket so so all we need to do is weld the stray piece here back into the jacket and that's a good opportunity to mention you know we've split something but what about when you want to combine things okay so in this case um, we're going to use the merge option which is right below split but beware um, these down here you have this option to weld and if that was on if you turned that on or it was already on and you were to, to uh, merge these two pieces it's going ZBrush is going to weld the points of this piece here into the jacket and we don't want that we want to keep them separate right so we're going to merge being sure that weld is turned off and uh, we'll just clear the mask kind of superstition but I'm going to clear the mask and merge down and I'm okay with undoable and there we go so now that's still its own poly group and everything else just want to make sure it's is by itself Bear with me for a second yeah so okay so now we've got all our poly groups and we've got our studs isolated that's good so let's just focus on the jacket here again and we're going to look at edge loops now okay so under geometry you'll find this menu edge loops and we're going to use the edge loop option now FYI you also have group loops um, and group loops are cool because you can you can group the whole thing at once I mean you can put edge loops around the whole you know all the different poly groups at, at one time the the caveat though is that um, and I'll just show you real quick when when you do that um, what it's going to do is it's going to it it's going to kind of like acid wash the corners it doesn't it's going to round, have a tendency to round out the corners and even if, even if you turn the polish all the way down to zero um, it's still going to do basically the same thing so we're not going to use group loops um, so the nice thing about edge loops is that it, it will preserve those corners the caveat is that edge loops wants to work on one individual piece at a time so kind of like when we were polygrouping the whole thing we had to go through each piece similarly with the edge loops we will have to click on a panel and then run edge loop but you can see the advantage here it's it's made nice you know it's kept the corners and it's just put a single loop around there and what that loop is going to do for us is when we subdivide the mesh it's going to preserve the corners better right okay so with that I will just go around all the little panels and hit edge loop same process as before kind of hiding and unhiding the individual panels almost there didn't take that long you know I think I think in the uh, computer age we're we're kind of spoiled you know like you know any 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 hint of manual labor and we freak out but you know sometimes sometimes it's nice to kind of zone out just to you know because art art you know it's a craft but it takes some 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 mental arithmetic it takes some you know it is a, simultaneously a craft and an intellectual pursuit because when you're trying to be creative or problem solve you're thinking pretty hard and then and then on the flip side there's there's moments where perhaps you're you know unwrapping a model you know doing uvs or, or just edge looping this thing and it's you know you just zone out you just listen to some music or what have you so there i think we've got the whole thing cool on to the next stage so I made a I made a slight faux pas when I was adding these edge loops 
Um, full disclosure, I'm recording this in the morning and I'm probably like half awake here. Um, I should have, so right now I have, I have this panel and I also have this edge loop. They're two separate polygroups. If I'd been smarter, I would have taken the whole thing as I went. I would have been um, grouping those but um, that's okay, I can still fix it. And don't worry, I'm not gonna make you sit through me fixing, fixing that, just, just, uh, just to let you know. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is go through, grab these big panels, and then grab the smaller edge loop that I created, and just go through, and once again, just group masked, and that will, that will fix that. So we're about to add some thickness using the extract feature. Uh, but before I do that, there's one more thing I want to do to the mesh. So we've added edge loops to the individual panels so that we can retain those corners. And just to kind of double down on that, what I've found through trial and error is that if you go down to the geometry pad right here, we're going to subdivide it one more time, but we're going to turn off the smooth modifier. And so what that does is it's going to tessellate it, but it's not going to interpolate um, the mesh, meaning when we tessellate it, it's basically just going to add density without smoothing things out. And you might be worried that, oh, we're going to get a lumpy mesh. But actually, no. Um, the extract feature has a tendency to kind of acid wash everything. And so this this is actually going to give us some pretty nice results so i've gone and i've tessellated it and now once again going to the extract feet panel down here the default settings are fine except we want to and this is this will be a bit of trial and error based on the scale of your mesh so i've found that i think i want my sickness thickness sickness thickness to be about 0.001 and you know that's working for this mesh built in real world kind of uh, scale. So, we, oops, I've lost that. So, so anyway, so we'll hide. We're going to do this on the individual panels once again. And the reason for that is, if you extract the whole thing, you're going to extract a single mesh. We want to keep the details created by having these things as separate panels. So I'm hiding everything else out and I'm going to mask that panel, go down to the thickness again where I screwed up 0 0.001 and hit extract. Now before you do anything, assuming you're happy with it, click accept. And now you'll see up in the subtool man, pan, menu, we've got a new tool called Extract One, right? And that is, there's the uh, jacket, if I unhide everything. Here's our jacket, original mesh, we still have it, hasn't gone away. And now we have this new panel that we've just extracted. And as an added bonus, you'll notice that the, it's created a polygroup for the interior. That's a good thing. We're, we want that. That's going to be useful, um, for example, when you're retopologizing. If you're retopologizing in Maya, the, uh, the modeling tools um, don't play well with surfaces that are very close together. So having the ability to basically hide the interior and just project onto the exterior is going to be useful. So we want to keep that. And so now all we have to do is go back to the old jacket here and get the next panel. Same thing. Um, our settings have been saved. Extract, accept. Cool. And now, you know, now so what you've got here, you'll notice, I'll, I'll unmask that, is... Um, there's you know a subtle gap there, but that's that's actually you know that's much more realistic, you know and you know yeah the the corners start to pull away a little bit, but not to worry. You could just grab them you know when we're done, we'll just grab the you know we could grab the move tool and we could just you know fix that. Um, but won't worry about that for now. So I'm just going to go around our jacket and just get all those different pieces there.
Okay, now we've finished extracting all the individual panels and our jacket has some thickness. Um, now you, you might have noticed uh, conspicuously absent are the zippers we made it back in uh, Marvelous Designer. Now the reason for that is the, the, the big advantage as far as getting as far as making a high res um, garment the the advantage we got from marvelous designer was posing the zipper you know having a, a, a more natural appearance having the cuffs maybe half open or, or you know something like that so but the thing the reality is that the zippers that marvelous designer creates are, are simply a bump map so for this model i am going to leverage the actual little pull pull uh, tab that, that comes with the zipper from Marvelous Designer, but for our actual zippers, we're going to use an IMM brush. And speaking of that, so um, coming up, yeah, so now we've got, you know, now we've got a nice foundation to sculpt on. Um, we've got some really fun stuff to look forward to in the next episodes. I'm going to show you, for example, how to make a uh, nice bump map using the depth map that the BPR renderer spits out. And with that, it's time for our Easter egg this week. Okay, so uh, welcome to my home, and this is my little Easter egg. Um, typically, I like to put, to put some art um, Easter eggs in my videos, as you guys probably know if you've been watching them so far. But this time, this week, we're changing it. I wanted to do something a little different because uh, I've been talking to a new friend, uh, one of my subscribers, J JDJR. And we, you know we've been just you know talking back and forth on on email, and he gave me you know and he was just sharing a bit about his life. He's studying game design right now, and he was telling me a bit about his situation right now. And it reminded me so much of myself when I started out. Um, you know I've been in this industry for 20 years now, and when I you know and basically when I when I was a teenager, I really didn't know what to do with my life. I didn't think that I could make, or didn't believe I could make a living as an artist. So, you know, I went to college and I tried all kinds of things, architecture, psychology, all kinds of stuff. And I ultimately came to the realization, I think, that, you know, in order to succeed in something, whatever you're going to do, you, you really have to love it. Like, if you're going to be a programmer, you need to be somebody who, you know, it doesn't matter if you were taking a course or not, you'd get up and you'd go program because you like doing that, right? So, you know, I like probably a lot of you guys, I love art. I love to draw, paint, sculpt, the whole bit. And, uh, and hey, baby. Um, so, anywho, so, so JD sent me about six questions and I'm not going to try and answer them all here, but I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Like, what is the life, what is life like to be an artist? What does it take to be an artist, you know, and what to do when you know facing difficulty learning new software? Um, number four, what is the current industry like? That's that's an interesting one. Uh, what is it? Is it easy to get a job or make money um, and to support your family? And lastly, he asked, uh, what is the future of the industry? So, let's. I'm not going to try. I'm not going to get to all these. I think I think this could be a standalone video. But I thought at least try to address a couple. You know, I thought maybe. Um, an interesting uh, thing would be, you know, you know, what is, uh, is it easy to get a job and support your family? Because I think that's, a, I think that's a good one. Yeah. Um, I think, yes, honestly. Um, but of course, so I've been working in this industry for a while and I think I would say, you know, like it's, it takes, I think typically, if between jobs, it might take me about uh, two or three months to find another job, right? So you always want to have like an emergency fund, some money kind of stocked away. So, you know, for example, I was working at Telltale and they shut down rather abruptly. Um, luckily, I've been saving, you know, I, I save every month for my retirement. And you don't really want to do this, but I did. So I tapped my retirement fund and that kind of carried me over until I got my current job at Ubisoft. Um, so, but yeah, you can, it's, you know, you can make good money in this industry. Um, there's, a, there's a, you know, the games industry needs a lot of artists. Um, they need a lot of, you know, engineers and they need concept artists. They need character modelers. They need animators. You know, you know, you, it's a lot of work making a video game. So that's the good news. I think if you've got the skills, 
yeah, you can you can get a job. And um, I would say, you know, to become an artist, like, a, you know, what what does it take to you know be an artist? It, practice, right? And so the thing I the the thing here's the thing I notice a, a lot of kids these days they'll they'll, they'll go into um, like I have one friend man and he he uh, he left art school with like a hundred thousand dollars in debt and and um, man you don't need to do that right so the, the biggest the, the biggest takeaway I got from art school is that art is a art is a, a, a skill that you can learn it's a craft um, that you can learn by doing it and you can teach yourself. I mean, I would say the same thing about programming too, you know, if you're passionate, if you're passionate about anything, you can teach yourself, right? So, um, you know, it, you might have heard this adage that, you know, it, um, it's, it's your portfolio that will get you the job and that is the truth. Now, now, now let's be real here. So, I think what I got, the other thing I got out of art school was it was the time to just focus and work on art and be surrounded by other people like like-minded people that inspire you you know to to work harder so you know so you can do it uh, but you, you know it, it takes discipline right you're gonna have to you're gonna have to work like um when i was in art school like i i blew off all my assignments to the absolute last minute and i went to every single drawing workshop there was and because i realized that like drawing right i mean I, you can be a computer artist you can be you know, working in ZBrush, um, but drawing is like the foundations of all visual arts. So I went to every single drawing workshop, and you know, I mean, I went to the fashion workshops, I went to the fine art workshops, I went to illustration. Anywhere there was a model posing, I'd be there and I'd be drawing. Right? Um, these days, I just I fire up the computer. I don't go to so many life drawing workshops anymore, but I'll fire up the computer, and. You know, and I'll, I, I love to get like a movie, for example, I'll, like I'll put a DVD on or I'll go to YouTube and I'll find some cool footage, maybe some lions, you know, running through the, the savannah and, you know, I'll freeze frame that on interesting poses and I'll just sketch that, you know, so you don't necessarily need to go to a, a life drawing workshop. You can, you know, these days you just you know, draw right off the computer and I, I honestly think that's just as valuable because the, the trick is what you want to do is a lot of quick studies, like a lot of quick drawings. Um, but I, I digress anyway. Um, but there, there you go. So, so I think, in summary, that's a skill that you can learn. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of people think that you need to have talent. You know, you know and I, I say talent is basically equal to to passion, right? If you're passionate about something whatever it is maybe it's surfing right and you love it so much man you're going like every single day and you're just doing it because you love it you're going to get better and i think that's basically what talent is it's it's like 99 percent of talent is is passion and maybe there's one percent that you might have some unique attribute about your personality or your physicality that that gives you an edge but i also kind of on the flip side think that Everyone has an edge; they just have to find it. Um, so there you go. Um, I hope I hope um, I like. If you guys like the like hearing me talk about this stuff, let me know. Um, and I might do I might do like a standalone video and just kind of go into the my kind of philosophy and experience of this uh, art and you know my philosophy of art and my experience of the games industry. Um, you know, I I I love being an artist. It, you know, it, it's like. Even if I'm not getting paid for it, you know, I'm going to get up in the morning and I'm going to draw. I mean, that's what I do every morning before I even go to work, right? I'll, I'll get up in the morning and I'll get out my sketch pad and I'll just do some little drawings and stuff. I'll be on the bus sketching ideas and stuff. I'm just, it's, you know, it's, I love it. Um, and I think that's what you, to really make it, that's what you need. You just need a passion for it, whatever it is in life that you want to do. If you have a passion for it, you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to succeed and you are going to be able to make money you know i think honestly that's your best chance of success is is just having that passion um but anyway um i think that's all, all for me i've been dribbling on for quite a while so sorry about that and uh but um if you like my videos um subscribe hit the you know hit the notification button like every you know everyone on youtube says that but um re re really makes a difference you know as i see more subscribers kind of it just energizes me and so um, thank you everyone who subscribed and I, I hope you enjoyed this video until next time happy modeling
Tchau.